Dear viewers, welcome to Crossroads on TVI. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Earlier this month, Toronto was home to the Tamil convention known as FETNA, which is an umbrella organization for mainly Tamils in the United States. This July was the first time they held their convention outside of the United States. It was an opportunity to bring together Tamils from all over and all walks of life. As a result, we had the opportunity to interview some outstanding and accomplished Tamils. Our first interview was with one of the keynote speakers at the convention, Mr. Rateshan Yoganathan. Mr. Yoganathan is one of the founders, along with Leon Rasaya and Bhaskaran Kandaya, of the Labara Group, a European telecommunications company worth almost one billion Canadian dollars. Rateshan was born in Jaffna in 1975 and arrived in the UK at age 15 with little to no English. His rise and success certainly makes us all very proud. Here is the interview. We're joined with Mr. Ratisan Yoganathan, the chairman of the Labara Group, uh, who's one of the keynote speakers at today's business forum. Uh, welcome to, um, to Canada and to the convention as well as to uh, TVI. Um, so, you know, uh, all, many of our viewers are familiar with uh, the great success your company Labara has enjoyed over the last um, decade plus years. Uh, I think a, a lot of us are proud of the success you've enjoyed and symbolizes a lot of the hard work that many in our community have gone through. What have you found to be your inspiration and motivation to achieve this success? First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to Toronto and, and particularly to the FEDNA event. And um, what motivated us is very simple. In my point of view, we had nothing to lose when we started off, given our background, where we came from. And um, it's not as if like our fathers were millionaires or billionaires and we had all these assets to uh, live, live off from. So everything we had to do was we had to survive. And survival instinct gives you the courage to go after anything that you want. And the time that you feel that you have a cushion to fall upon, it becomes, you know, your drive is tested or your passions are tested. So in my point of view, even if you have anything, always believe if you truly want to build something as if there's nothing there and there's nothing to lose. If you have that mentality, you can only go up. There's no way that you can go down from then on. In your keynote uh, address, you, you spoke about the importance of values and your integrity. Um, you know, in the business world, there are many instances where values have to be compromised, um, shortcuts have to be made. How have you found that balance, if, if at all a balance, in, in your success and in the business world? Partly what you said is very true. I mean... Ethics and values are very broad because sometimes people ask, you know, what is right for you might not be right for me and what is wrong for me might not be wrong for you, right? It's, def it's defining what is right and what is wrong. And ethics and values are very important to me as a person. And hence, it became part of Libara. If you don't believe in something, you cannot make that a culture. So you've got to believe yourself. That's, that's what you want for your organization and for your people. And given how did we manage to build relationship with other companies, as long as from early on you establish your characteristics for you as a person and for you as an organization, people will work according to what you want. Right? I mean, the whole point is, like I said earlier at the, you know, at my, in my speech, if you, if you become successful in what you do, people will adjust you. And if your character is very strong and your value system is very strong, people will understand that. Nobody wants to be a bad person. Nobody wants to do wrong things, right? As long as your value system is very straightforward, don't cheat people and don't cut corners and, and you know, don't take other people's money and, and so forth. They are very, very simple values and we've been taught when we were kids. In my point of view, very simple. I ask most of our em employees, who, particularly in the senior management, I ask them, if you want to teach this, you know, whatever that you are doing, 
if you will not ask your children to do you know don't steal don't do that at work i mean it applies to us as well what makes you different you know why are you hypocrite that you tell your children not to do it but it's okay for you to do it on on that topic of character you spoke on the importance of hiring the smartest people and the best people how important it is you know many in, in our community many watching here are part of organizations whether not for profit or or business how important is it to find the right people to do to to do the work it's the biggest gamble that you probably take in 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 terms of hiring the right people because nobody walks in and say i'm the right i mean of course every single one of them are going to say that i'm the right person for the role but there's nothing stating that that person is going to be the right person you got to live and find out right so but you can define you know we got multiple different matrix or tests that we apply or type of questions that you ask in identifying whether somebody relates to you and you have your gut instinct you know more than anything all these tests and whatever what i believe in is gut instinct if somebody walks in either i like them in the first 10 seconds probably or not right and 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 an important thing to feel is that you have the freedom to hire anybody in the world you're not forced to hire anyone right so have the freedom you know people say we got to hire within this one month yes there is a need to fill a role but nobody is i mean you don't have to hire the wrong person for the role you can wait till you, you find it has taken me 2 years to find a ceo so now i have given the post as a ceo to david moffat and then i have taken the chairman role so it has taken me 2 years the thing is until you find the right person don't do it uh you know in in the growth of any business or any organization uh, one faces critics detractors people who are trying to bring the organization down how do you handle critics and challengers and, and well not so much challengers of competition but critics and uh, any negative energy that may come your way in the growth of an organization first of all your success is not defined by somebody else's praise or critics right the the best critic that you're going to have is yourself the most important person in your life that you have to impress is yourself not someone else if you believe that then everything else becomes a lot more easier in life you know you feel a lot more content i mean content is a big word i think you got to feel happy within yourself and and feel confident so if people cr- uh, criticize criticism is the best gift that you can get from anybody so if people criticize then try and find out why are they criticizing don't feel bad about it or don't feel down in my point of view i can only get better by you getting you know giving me criticism because you are telling me all the things that is wrong with me according to you and it's up to me to evaluate exactly so i mean it's absolutely fine to have criticism and be open to criticism one thing you know many in our community are very proud of is the the work the labara foundation has been doing with underprivileged children in india and in sri lanka why do you do it you know it's very common and many of us in the west and you know are enjoying our material success despite our humble origins but remain elusive to a connection with back home or doing good in the world uh wh- why do you do that despite you know your busy schedule your hectic um workload um wh- why why give back <laughs> it's a, it's a I'll ask you the same thing why not so you're asking me why would i do it i'm asking why shouldn't you do it you know it in in my point of view it's very simple you put things very uh, in a simple way frankly speaking i always said this i have more than i deserve i truly truly feel that everybody works hard every single man or woman in this world works very very hard but your financial success depends on you can call it luck it depends on what industry that you get into how good you are how you smart you are and so forth multiple different factors if you become successful and you have enough in my point of view it's right as a human to look after other mankind and there is you can enjoy your success and i always believe that you could enjoy your success like i said earlier you know if you want to drive the ferraris or the mclarens drive it enjoy it if you want to live in a massive house then please do you want to look after your parents and friends and families you do but you got to have a much bigger thinking than just pure materialistic life that you want to lead and that's what i believe in i mean it, in in my family i think i have learned a lot of things from my mother my mother is um even if she doesn't have anything she will still give anyway so 
probably learned that from my mother's side. At the same time, like I said, I feel so fortunate to do all the things that I do. And um, in, in many ways, I can choose what, what I want to do. Nobody is telling me what... what, what. And, and another important thing is, you said in my busy schedule, busy means what do you choose to be busy with? That word busy comes from. It's up to you. You prioritize where you want to be. Today, I could be here or I could be somewhere else. Right? If I love doing the foundation work, I'm going to do the foundation work. If I want to go back to Libara or my hotel, hotels that I'm building, then I'll go back and do that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what makes me happy is what I want to do and, and, and live. And a final uh, last quick question. Um, in your speech, you spoke to your vision for 2020 to be Labar to be the, the choice of one billion, the brand of choice for one billion. Can you quickly explain to us your vision for the future and its growth? The vision is, um, it's, it's quite, you know, it's complex, but the vision is supposed to be complex. And if it is easy, then, you know, everybody else, uh, uh, in my opinion, you, get, you should get an opportunity to explain that vision to people in person. So the vision came from, the, Libara will be the brand of choice for one billion people by 2020. Like I said, by 2020, the world population will be over, the estimated population will be over 8 billion. Out of that 8 billion, 1 billion people will be migrants. And that is an opportunity that I want Libara to go after and other companies to go after. But it's, a, it's a huge opportunity. It's continued to grow. And we do not have world-leading global brands within that ethnic community. Like I said earlier, probably Western Union, but doing one type of product. What about other products? What about other services tailored to that migrant community? And that's where... I would want Libara to focus on and build our brand. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Yorganan, Arithisan. That was uh, a terrific talk yeah, inside and, and this interview as well. Uh, and, you know, on behalf of the community and our viewers, we're very proud and, and happy to have you here and talk to you and hear your experiences and revel in the success and the joy it's brought all of us. Uh, thank you for joining us, dear TVI viewers. You just watched an interview with Mr. Arithisan Yorganan, the chairman and president of the Labara Group. Our second interview is from the other side of life. I had the chance to interview Nakiran. If you haven't heard of him, just wait. Nakiran is a rising star in Europe, Malaysia, and Singapore, where he's a household name. He's a singer, songwriter, actor, director, and music producer. More importantly, he's an avid speaker and supporter of preserving our Tamil language. I got a chance to speak with Nakiran at FETNA, and here's the interview. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of FETNA 2013 in, in Toronto, Canada. Uh, joining me now is Nakiran, who I'm very excited to interview. Uh, Nakiran is a, a filmmaker, film producer, singer, songwriter, uh, you know, artisan. And uh, he's joining us to speak about who he is, his career, as well as the importance of our language and culture. Uh, Nikiran, for you know, the benefit of our viewers, can you give us a quick, uh, you know, uh, of who you are and the background of who you are and, uh, you know, what you're doing? Wanakam, um, my name is Nakiran. I'm originally from Malaysia, but I currently live in uh, the UK due to my work. Um, and apart from my full-time work, I also focus on uh, my attention on my... Uh, uh, and Tamil language and I, and I like singing and songwriting so that's how my focus is on now so I do all that on a part-time basis so I'm known here I was brought here because of my background because of my background from Malaysia and also to uh, to instigate the youths here on the importance of the Tamil language and how how to bring across our identity and culture going forward you know, in Malaysia, I understand, you know, the Tamil community has been there several generations. Uh, you know, and our com Tamil community in Canada and, you know, throughout the diaspora is starting to go into our second, third generation. And with that comes certain challenges. And one of them being is retaining the connection to the homeland, connection to the language and culture. How have Malaysian Tamils, and yourself included, uh, uh, created that connection and that uh, passion for, for Tamil? Now we, we in Malaysia, we, 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 have, we are a small minority group in Malaysia, yet there's so many people out there, Tamil people out there, so it's much easier for us to retain our culture and our tradition and our identity because when you go out, you can speak to another Tamil person right away. Uh, there's, there's certain parts of Malaysia we, you don't see many Tamil people around, but generally, uh, Tamil people are out there for you to be able to speak to. And also there's a very, there was a very tight connection because people tend to go back to their India and come back. You know, uh, there was always a link. Uh, it, 
right now probably the, the more Malaysian rather than the, any Indian connection. So I wouldn't say you always need to go back to your homeland in order to retain the ties with the, with the Tamil language and identity. We've been there for a long time. In the last couple of generations, we have we've become our own Malaysian Tamils. We speak differently. Although we speak Tamil, our Tamil is a little bit different than the Indian Tamils. Uh, we do watch the Tamil movies and all. So the Tamil language, we still retain the Tamil uh, songs from movies. We still watch that. Uh, apart from that, we are a separate Tamil, Malaysian Tamil identity. We have got that as a Malaysian Tamil identity by itself. Yeah. Uh, you're a very accomplished singer and you know, re releasing a lot of you know, um, great tracks recently. But going beyond you know, having the ability to, to sing well, what, what uh, talk to us about the passion of singing. Like, what, why do you sing and how does it allow you to express yourself? Singing has always been part of me because since I've been singing since a very young age. My mother was a singer, so probably that's how it came about. Uh, my father was a Tamil enthusiast, um, and so that's how both of them combined to become what I am now. So I also have interest in making uh, music videos. So when I when I sang, now people want to watch songs rather than rather than just to hear them. Uh, people that just don't listen to songs anymore, they want to watch them and. Making music videos was, was a requirement now for me. So I start learning to make music videos by myself and that's how I came about making music videos. Now, what's the next step? You know, I, I thought, okay, let's make music videos. What am I going to do next? There was always interest in making film, filmmaking. I love film direction. And my wife is another person who has got some amazing stories to tell. So I thought, let's combine that together and let's make some new future films. So now, right now we are working on a, a, a new film called Disturbed. A Tamil name will be Kulapam. Um, and just released a trailer on YouTube recently. Uh, we're going to proceed on that path now and continue with music as well as singing. I'm looking, certainly looking forward to, to that project. Uh, you know, it's, it may be ironic for me to ask this question, but perhaps in Tamil you can uh, talk to our viewers, not only the parents, but also the, the youth, the importance uh, of retaining the language and making an active participation in, in preserving it. And perhaps you can speak to it in Tamil. Um, Tamil Moli Evola Mukian Kekering, Tamil Moli Mukiana, Tamil Namka Arayano. Arayala Mel Mukina Sola Tavel, Palapir Soldra, Soldranga, Velina de Pona Pregan, Arayal the Yellan the Ron, Arayal the Yellan the Tip Pregavan, the Yerva the Vaisal and Mupa the Vaisal, Yosikan, Yon, Tamil Katir Clamene, Tamil Chinna Vaisal Katakar, Apama or Mukia, Petro or Mukia Karnam, Namaka Tamil Solikur Katina, Tamil Tay, or Marin the Maza and Mother Son of the Pola, Tamil or Marin the Madri, the Kurti Akan of Pulehilke, other Namarupi Yellan the Rang and Solikuta, Puling and Allah and Ron, Yosikra, Yosikra, Yon, Tamil Solikur Clayen. Tamil when the Angel and Tana Valandra, you know, in the Natal Alarm, Tamil Angel and Pesan Valandra, Tamil Matu Ninga Solikuran and Katigra, as Rombo Muki and Karna, the Nama Adayala, and the Adayala the Yelandita, Ipermope, Nat Lavande, Adayala Ilamas Alapir, and the Madri Ayrone, or Adime Yanambola Ayrimo Modo, or Bayaman Greek. What is the, the power, the gift that the language gives you in, 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 in whatever you endeavor to do? Um, Tamil and Kurkur Vendo were superiority complex in Suluangla, other than the Tamil Kurkur. Other than the Nani were weird in the island and a parker and Tamil Nala. Other Illadna, other Yeran the Repent and Agra, either Sanjalami and a good confidence or motivation trigger, other Tamil Nai and a good carnaman, Varlare, Tamil Mulimutumula, Tamil Varlare and a Marsakali Prindranga, and Gapa Puvisulang, and a Masola Pambra, and the Maria, and a Masola Pambra, and a Chivalna of Prinsulang, other Polana, other and a good. Or a motivation or a encouraging or, a, or a identity. We have the privilege of hearing a few lines. I know the circumstances for singing, singing are not the greatest uh, in, these, uh, in this area, but uh, uh, we'll enjoy uh, what Nikiran has for us. Yeravin nirule yen nai sool girade yindru thani mail naan tu nayatru nila vokkaraindu mella marayude yindru valiyatru thavikire ningu udita Lagia Muham Wundru Olia Yenai Sulu De Adan Vinmino Alaira Vil Suriano Nandri Wundre Nan Sulgire. And that was our interview with the singer, songwriter, music producer Nakir. Also, as you can imagine, the future of Fetna and Tamil culture is based on our youth. I had the opportunity to speak to some American Tamil youth about their experiences growing up in the U.S. 
Following this interview, we'll have a short break. Do join us after the quick announcement. I'm now joined with some youth, and we're going to hear their experiences and thoughts about FETNA. Uh, so, you know, I guess the first question is why? Like, why do you guys come? Um, well, my parents come every year, and it's a good time to get uh, it's a good time to get to know new Tamil people. And it's a good time to um, you know get to know our culture and everything. So it's really one of the only foundations that kind of um, gears all our programs towards like culture, okay, Tamil great, culture. Great. Uh, what activities do you guys look forward to, or or speakers, or whatever it is? Um, I mean, last year we kind of organized our own basketball tournament. That was a lot of fun. And then, I mean, I just kind of enjoy looking at all the performances and stuff and being involved in debates. So that's a lot of fun. Um, why is it important? Like, you know, I understand it's the federation of Tamil Sangams from all over the states. Uh, why is it important to come together? And I'm sure you guys don't see each other often if you're from different states. So why is that an important feature of coming together once a year? Um, well... Um, we kind of like reunite every year we have a gang or whatever so we really look forward to meeting each other like you know most people probably just see each other once a year so that's like such a fun experience we're really looking forward for that one you know one time seeing each other which is in FETNA every year so uh, you know here in Toronto and I don't know if you guys know but we're the largest Tamil community in North America uh, you know, so our experience, I mean, at least for me growing up here, is different than, than your experience here, I mean, in the States, right? Where you may not have as many, you know, uh, Tamil community members or families. Uh, so how is it uh, growing up Tamil, second generation, in the U.S.? Uh, um, I actually really like it, but I'm just uh, not as happy as, like, if I lived in Toronto, I'd be more happier because there's, like, so many Tamil people here. I'm from North Carolina. There are, like, quite a few uh, Tamil people, but we don't, there's not that many youth, you know, so, like, I don't get to see as many, like, he's from North Carolina, and he knows that there's, like, not enough Tamil people there, but to see this many people here is, like, pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the, you know, uh, your, your thoughts on, on having it in Toronto. How is, you know, it's only been, you know, half day, like almost the end of the first day. Uh, what are your thoughts compared to, I guess, other conventions? I know last year it was in uh, Baltimore. Uh, so uh, what are your observations? Well, I wasn't there last year. This is my first one. But I really enjoy how, uh, we're, you know, all the youth really get together. Okay. And, you know, we don't kind of just separate off. But uh, FETNA is really all about coming together as uh, the Tamil community. Uh, of all of you, who, who's been to f the most fatness? Okay, so maybe you can speak to that. Maybe the two of you can speak to how, how, how does it compare to previous ones? Yeah. Oh, it's it's definitely a d different community here. Like every, it's just like it's nice not. Uh, it's nice kind of being considered yeah. kind of foreign I think, here. I think the people are different too a little bit because it's like in Canada, you know. There's like different vibes going on. I see that kid, Domo kids in America give more importance to like language, and then you see kids here giving more importance to culture I guess but it's good seeing like a good mix of them since oh, some of us are like from America and some of us you know uh, thank, thank you guys uh, we don't take up too much of your time we you enjoy the rest of the activities uh, we'll continue our ongoing coverage of FETNA 2013 in Toronto Canada <laughs>
He's a professor of physics at the University of Illinois at Chicago and the founder of the high-tech company Bell Labs. Here's our interview with him. Now I'm joined with Dr. Sivalingam Sivanandan, who, as many of you might know, was recently awarded uh, by President Barack Obama's Champion of Change Award, which is given to um, immigrants who have contributed to the growth of American business, American enterprise, and research as well. Uh, so we're very happy to have you, uh, Dr. Sivanandan. And uh, you know, in, I caught your speech just a little while early, and I was very impressed by the importance you laid on um, one's foundation, one's root, and one's family. So for the benefit of our viewers, can you tell us about your, your origins and, and the role your origins played in, in the success you, you, you are enjoying now? Yeah, the, I was, uh, it's actually, I want to start by saying, that first of all, I want to thank you uh, for the interview. I'm really uh, excited. And um, one, I'm a proud product of my community. I think every community has strength and the weakness. I think what's important, what thrives us, is when we are proud of ourselves. For us to be a proud people, we need to really believe in our community. And uh, I was born in Chavagacheri, and uh, and uh, and the and uh, you want uh, the foundation and value than any of the success matra so the teachers, and school teacher and a community Upon Jalam, Sivilinga Master Damahan, Ivarke Chali Chaya Mudim, Ivar one the another heart of a chair and the Ivarala Mudim. And the Nambike Valata de and the community and the uh teachers and the Saraswati Vitya Salele among the uh upon the foundation was laid over there and Jaffna Hindu College and then the leadership and um, science and technology. So it between your relatives, your community and your teachers is where the core foundation was built. And I was really lucky to have that. And uh, it's a, uh, and I remember mom always say, if you want some extra money, we were really born to, to teachers. By that time, you know, older one goes to London, you all know it, uh, they ran out of money. So we don't have a lot of money to do it. So he said, uh, we remember selling coconut and uh, mangoes and, uh, and I call it a garden city. But the and the and the community and enjoy and enjoy what you have. I mean, sure the other side has much better, but you also have if you can learn to enjoy what you have and you are going to be very successful. That foundation is what built me up. Um, you know, you uh, arrived to the U.S., I'm assuming, without much wealth and without much contacts. And, uh, you know, one thing I think a lot, and my parents probably went through, is the acclimatization process, getting used to a new land and a new culture and a new way of doing things. How did you find that change to America when you landed in Chicago 20-plus uh, years ago, 25 years ago? As I said, I mean, I came, I left a small land and I, for first time into the plane, landed in Chicago. And obviously when I landed it, I didn't realize that uh, Chicago is so large and in order, and because, you know, from Sri Lanka, you think every, it's a, it must be a small one. But the, when I landed it, it was a strange, but the culture of the North American culture and US and Canada, the, you are treated as a person of value and they really take care of you, try to help you. They push harder for you to achieve as an individual, but you were treated as a person of value. And the University of Illinois at Chicago really helped me really, uh, you know, achieve my goal. And that, it, it was a surprise, as I said, hot, I, didn't, I saw the sign of hot dog, and I said, wait a minute, these guys are eating dog meat. So that's my introduction. And I didn't know all these things, but uh, the community as a whole treated you as a person of value and helped you to succeed. And it meant a huge, huge, 
Um, when you received uh, a few months ago this award from the White House, the um, Champion for Change Award, uh, how, how did it feel when you were notified about it to be recognized by the President of the United States, you know? And I, I had to say that it was shocking because uh, I got, uh, as an American Physical Society fellow, uh, SBI science fellows, that's something I was looking for. But this one, when I received uh, the call, I was surprised when it was they were giving it to me. And I had I can't even uh, give another joke. Second day, I received a call from Homeland Security. As an immigrant, first reaction is, "What did I do?" <laughs> uh, but then they said, "No, no, no, no. We are going to recognize uh, the the one of the outstanding American by choice." So they gave the two award. So first, I received it. I had to say I didn't think of anything because as you all climbing and running and running, you don't realize that how far you have gone until you have four step back and think back. So I was really taken out. Then I said, wait a minute, this champion of Chong does not belong to me because it belongs to my community and my team who really worked hard and that community which gave me the foundation. And I think when I realized that I said, yes, we earned it, but it's we earned it, I did not earn it. And I think I basically, my choice was to pick the best people. I mean, I would have said that 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 when we think that we already learned enough, we cannot learn from others, it's time to retire. And I think I would have said that I would have said that Kuda, strong akala, if you can bring it, then you will succeed. And, and, but you have to give the freedom for them to succeed. That's how you succeed. I was really surprised, but it belongs to the community again. Uh, thank you uh, so much. And thank you for coming to FETNA and to Toronto. And, uh, you know, many of us in the community are very proud. And we were all happy when we heard the news when you got that award from the White House. Well, uh, Product of Yalpana uh, Tamlakunda and the product. I'm really uh, happy to be here, and actually I felt so good. And uh, it's uh, it's it's I'm your product. You just saw our interview with Dr. Sivalingam Sivanandan, the recently announced White House Champion of Change. We also had the opportunity to speak with Tamil National Alliance MP Sridharan. He spoke to us about the conditions and realities facing our people back home. Here's the talk. We're now joined with MP Sridharan from the TNA uh, from Sri Lanka. He's joining us at FETNA. And uh, he'll be speaking to us about what's happening uh, back home. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Sridharan, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, you know, uh, right now, there's always something happening back home. Right now, the situation is the in Northern Provincial Council elections. Uh, so, can you tell our viewers what is happening there? வட மாகாண சபைக்கான தேர்தல் என்பது ஒன்று அறிவிக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறது அந்த தேர்தலில் எங்களுடைய கட்சி போட்டியிடுவதற்கான முழு தயார் நிலைகளையும் ஏற்படுத்தி இருக்கின்றது ஆனால் இந்த வட மாகாண சபை தேர்தலிலே பங்கு கொள்வதன் ஊடாக தமிழ் மக்களுடைய தேசிய அபிலாசைகள் முழுவதும் பூர்த்தி செய்யப்படும் என்றோ அல்லது இது எங்களுடைய அபிலாசைகளை பூர்த்தி செய்வதற்கான ஒரு தொடக்க புள்ளியாகவோ அல்லது இது ஒரு இடைக்கால தீர்வாகவோ நாங்கள் ஏற்றுக்கொண்டு இந்த தேர்தலில் போட்டியிடவில்லை தேர்தலில் நாங்கள் போட்டியிடாவிட்டால் பொருத்தமற்ற அல்லது நாங்கள் விரும்பத்தகாத பிரஜைகள் அந்த இடங்களை கைப்பற்றுவதன் மூலம் இனம் அளிக்கப்படுவதற்கான வாய்ப்புகள் அதிகமாக இருக்கிறது ஆகவே இதனை நாங்கள் மாற்று நில நிலைகளில் உள்ளவர்களிடம் இந்த நிலை போக்கூடாது என்பதற்காக நாங்கள் இந்த தேர்தலில் போட்டியிடுகின்றோம் போட்டியிடுவதன் மூலம் எங்களுடைய லட்சியத்தை அடைவதற்கான ஒரு கருவியாக அதற்கான தேசிய அபிமானிகளை வேட்பாளர்களாக நிறுத்துவதன் மூலம் அந்த வழியை அடையலாம் என்று நாங்கள் எண்ணுகிறோம் ஃபார் அவர் பீப்புள் ஹியர் இன் டொரோண்டோ லண்டன் யூகே சம் பீப்புள் ஆர் you know scared to go back uh, but the, sometimes they don't teach the children to about their native place why is it important for our people to come back to to ngaruruk and you know visit and stay connected 
எங்களுடைய இடங்களுக்கு எங்களுடைய இளைஞர்களோ யுவதிகளோ அல்லது வெளிநாடுகளிலே வசிக்கின்ற எங்கள் சகோதரர்களோ வருவது என்பது மிக சந்தோக கண்ணோடு தான் அங்கு பார்க்கப்படுகின்றது ஏனென்றால் அங்கு முழுமையாக ஒரு இராணுவ முகாங்களும் இராணுவ பிரசன்னங்களும் இராணுவ புலனாய்வாளர்களுடைய கண்காணிப்புகளுக்கு மத்தியில் தான் எங்களுடைய வாழ்க்கை அங்கு நகர்ந்து கொண்டிருக்கிறது ஆகவே புலம்பெயர் நாடுகளில் இருக்கிற தமிழர்கள் அங்கு வருகை தருகின்ற பொழுது அவர்கள் ஒரு புலிச்சாயம் பூசப்பட்ட ஒரு முறைக்குள் பார்க்கப்படுகின்றார்கள் அவர்கள் மீண்டும் போராட்டம் ஆரம்பிக்கூடும் என்கிற சந்தேகங்கள் இலங்கை அரசிடம் இருக்கிறது ஆகவே அவர்கள் அதனால் சந்தகத்தோடு பார்ப்பதனால் எங்களுடைய புலம்பெயர் தமிழர்கள் சரியான முறையில் ஒரு ஜன ரீதியான செயற்பாடுகளையோ அல்லது தொழில் ரீதியான முயற்சிகளையோ அந்த மண்ணிலே மேற்கொள்வதற்கான வாய்ப்புகள் மிக குறைவாக இருக்கின்றன இலங்கை அரசும் அதனை விரும்பவில்லை என்பதுதான் எங்களுக்கு தெரிகின்ற காரியம் இந்த நொவம்பர் so it will happen uh, is there any hope of any change after november what do you think will happen இலங்கையிலே ஒரு இன அழிப்பு நடைபெற்றது இன அழிப்பு நடைபெற்றதற்கான சகல ஆதாரங்களையும் பிபிசியினுடைய முன்னாள் செய்தியாளர் பிரான்சிஸ் கரிஷனோ அல்லது கலம் மக்ரே அவர்களுடைய நோ ஃபயர் ஸ்போன் என்பதன் ஊடாகவோ நாங்கள் பூரணமாக அறியக்கூடியதாக இருக்கின்றது ஆகவே அங்கு தமிழர்கள் ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி ஐம்பத்தாறாம் ஆண்டு இருந்து ரெண்டாயிரத்தி ஒன்பதாம் ஆண்டு வரைக்கும் சிங்கள மக்களால் தமிழர்கள் அழிக்கப்பட்டார்கள் என்பதற்கு முழுமையான செய்திகள் ஆதாரங்கள் இருக்கின்றன ஆகவே இந்த நிலையில் இலங்கையிலே ஒரு கொமன்வெல்த் மாநாட்டை நடத்துவது என்பது இலங்கை அரசு இப்படியான ஒரு குற்றச் செயல்களிலும் ஈடுபடவில்லை அல்லது தமிழர்களுக்கு எதிரான எந்த ஒரு செயற்பாடுகளையும் அவர்கள் செய்யவில்லை என்பதை நிரூபிப்பது போல அது அமைந்துவிடும் ஆகவே தான் இந்த கொமன்வெல்த் மாநாட்டை கனடா நிராகரிப்பதும் அதை தொடர்ந்து லண்டன் அதனை நிராகரிப்பதையும் நாங்கள் நல்ல செய்தியாக அதை பார்க்கிறோம் இருந்தாலும் அந்த நிராகரிப்பதோடு மட்டும் நிற்காமல் இன அழிப்பு நடைபெற்றது அதற்கு ஒரு சர்வதேச விசாரணை தேவை அதனூடாக தமிழ் மக்கள் அடைந்த துன்பங்களுக்கு ஒரு நீதி தேவை என்பதை நாங்கள் மீண்டும் மீண்டும் வலியுறுத்தி and last question how can our people outside help our people in sri lanka how can they help தமிழர்களுக்கு ஈழ தமிழர்களுக்கு வெளியிலே இருக்கிற தமிழர்கள் எந்த வகையிலே உதவலாம் என்பது கூட இன்று இருக்கின்ற நிலையிலே அங்கு ஒரு தொழில் முறைப்படுத்தப்பட்ட தொழில் வாய்ப்புகள் இல்லை தொண்ணூறாயிரத்துக்கு மேற்பட்ட வடக்கு கிழக்கிலே விதவைகள் இருக்கின்றார்கள் சிறார்கள் தாய் தந்தையரை இழந்த நிலையிலே வாழ்கிறார்கள் தொடர்ந்தும் மக்கள் அங்கு தொழில் இல்லாமல் வாழ்வாதார நிலைகள் இல்லாமல் அபிவிருத்தி என்ற மாயைக்குள் அவர்கள் மடக்கப்பட்டு கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் அல்லது முடக்கப்பட்டு கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் அவர்களுடைய வங்கி கடன்களையும் அல்லது லீசிங் பணங்களையும் கட்ட முடியாமல் திணறுகின்றார்கள் இந்த நிலையில் அங்கிருக்கின்றவர்களுடைய கல்வி ரீதியான செயற்பாடுகள் மாணவர்களுடைய பொருளாதார ரீதியான செயற்பாடுகள் மாணவர்களுக்கான கல்வி செயற்பாடுகளுக்கு புலம்பெயர் தமிழர்கள் உதவுகின்ற உதவிகள்லாம் அவர்களை மேல் நோக்கி செல்வதற்கான வழியை உருவாக்குகின்றது ஆகவே அந்த புலம்பெயர் அமைப்பும் ஈழ தமிழர்களும் தமிழ்நாட்டில் இருக்கிற தமிழர்களும் ஒரு ஒழுங்கமைக்கப்பட்ட ஒரு முகாமைத்துவத்திற்குள் நாங்கள் ஒரு செயற்பாட்டை முன்னெடுப்பது அவசியம் அதற்கு எல்லோரும் நாங்கள் அமைப்பு ரீதியான வேறுபாடுகளை கடந்து ஒற்றுமையாக செயற்பட வேண்டும் என்பது Thank you very much, Mr. Sridharan. It goes without say that the way of the future in transportation is all electric cars. The company that is considered by far the biggest innovator and leader in this field is Tesla Motors. Their CIO or Chief Information Officer is a Tamil by the name of Jay Vijayan. We had a chance to speak to him about his highly important role in this groundbreaking company and his path to success. Here is our interview with him. We are joined now with uh, Mr. Jay Vijayan, who is the CIO or the Chief Information Officer for Tesla Motors. Tesla, as uh, many of you might be aware, is not only the world's first all-electric car company, but has won uh, Motor Trend Automobile Magazine's Car of the Year for 2013, the Consumer Reports, and it's considered uh, the best electric car. And only that, it's also a luxury sedan as well. Uh, so one of the main people b- behind the success and growth of Tesla is is Mr. Jay Vijayan who uh, who serves as the chief information officer um welcome uh, Jay to uh, Crossroads as well as to Fatna and in Toronto uh so uh, you know I was speaking to you earlier I realized you come from humble origins compared to you know many of the other leading executives at at uh, US Fortune 500 businesses so I'd like to get an idea of how important was your upbringing in part of the success that you're enjoying now and the role that you're in right now yeah i think i think it has uh, played a very very important role and especially um kind of 
withstanding some of the hardships, right? Because any any success, either a startup or growing the corporate ladder, doesn't come easy. So you have to withstand a lot of things and focus more and more on the positive side, what you can build on, what you can learn on your failures, and then build on top to um, uh, come over and then uh, either successfully launch a business, launch a product, or um, uh, be in top of a corporate um, um, company, um, running a huge organization successfully, delivering value to the customers as well as the investors. Um, you were born and raised in uh, Chennai, uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, what aspects of Tamil culture and you know your upbringing and your, your family helped uh, groom the success and the hard work behind not only your success in Tesla but also before with VMware and other software development companies you've played a, a leading role in? Uh, yeah, I, I think one um, I would say is obviously the moral and ethical values very much uh, in terms of anything that you do, um, you do with the uh, with a, with a strong ethics, and I think it, it carries a long way, starting from um, um, uh, from whatever level you start with, and to end to be extremely successful and to be sustaining and stay successful. Um, I think the core values and the et the ethics that you follow is very very critical. I think that's one which I think was given to me by my family, my parents, and my culture. So it pr plays a big role there. Yeah, I think that's one important, as I said in my previous, uh, um, the, ans uh, the previous answer, is uh, also in terms of withstanding hardships, um, getting over that and focusing on the pos positive. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, being an executive at uh, Tesla Motors, you're working with Elon Musk. Uh, you know, he's an individual many in the world regard as a, another Henry Ford, another Thomas Edison. He's a brilliant mind, uh, you know, terrific hard worker, and actually has a Canadian connection. He yes. studied two years at, at Queen's University, and his mother is Canadian. Uh, but what, I, what I'm, and I'm sure a lot of people are curious about, is how is it to work directly uh, with, uh, with a man like Elon Musk? It's it's phenomenal. I mean, I, I feel so fortunate um, getting an opportunity to work uh, with Elon, work for Elon directly, and he's um, extremely inspirational. And what he does and how he does is day to day for me. It's I, I feel so so fortunate uh, that um, I can learn so much from him. I mean, he I mean he's kind of like a um, institution by himself for entrepreneurs, for young professionals, or even scientists and innovators. Um, I've even read recently that one of the popular scientists who just spoke to Elon for like an hour um, had a comment telling that, hey, I wasted uh, 15 years of my life. After talking to Elon, that's how I felt because the way he thinks and he practically wants to execute and do the impossible. Um, I think everyone should think because people really tend to g boxed in with the traditional stuff and the, the, the standard way of thinking. The way Elon thinks is completely, completely out of the box and he totally questions status quo and say, why shouldn't be this be different? Why can't this be simple? Why can't this be easy? Why can't we do um, non-traditional stuff, right? Everything that he does, starting from Tesla Motors and changing the uh, automotive industry, the SpaceX where sending rockets uh, cheaper and faster and quicker and um, in terms of whatever he's talking about the Hyperloop where you can travel between um, uh, San Francisco to LA uh, in 30 minutes which these are all phenomenal things and I learned from him uh, I'd imagine working with with such a leader uh, there must be many instances or incidents where you know it really taught leadership or uh, and you know brought it home uh, is there any story you can share with us with Elon that really captured you know his spirit yeah um, I'll, I'll share a few points and one um, I, 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 I mean there are several to learn from Elon um, one important thing is he's very uh, I would say um, transparent and he gives so much clarity to the organization. So what, what happens is, uh, so one is he has a strong vision, very strong vision, and he continues to strive towards his vision. So, so my first um, interview with Elon was in 2010, and then I joined Tesla in 2012, uh, as I mentioned to you briefly, that first time it didn't work out, and the second time I came into Tesla, and then almost two, two and a half years after I spoke to him for the first time, I literally see what he described to me as a vision two and a half years before, was exactly what was being executed in the in the uh, in the company, and that's that's one. And uh, he he has so much clarity on his vision and what he wants to do. Uh, even it, uh, even if it's an impossible vision, if you if you hear from him like five years before, you'll think, okay, is this guy really dreaming? But he's not. He even though he's dreaming, he wants that to be a reality. That's one. Second is he provides clarity to the organization. He clearly gives 
here's the number one thing the whole company needs to work towards right not many ceos do that they give a big vision statement and it's so it's clarity i would say to say okay this is number one goal for all of you for the next six months right the whole company everyone rallies towards achieving that and then he'll say number two number three don't worry about number two number three right now but once we finish number two your number one your number two becomes a number one. so the clarity is is phenomenal and then the other thing i get opportunities to work with him closely and very recent thing i'd say is how can we make uh, life easy for our customers right so we he, he as i said he questions status quo for our website he the way he described me is like it has to be one click for our customers right buying a car even though it's 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 a big investment but it shouldn't be that complex if you if you see i think there was a report i think it was uh, um consumer reports are one other organization they they printed it. they said the worst any worst in any consumer experience is a car buying experience for anyone right so the, so people always feel they uh, didn't get the best value and all of those things right? so the coming back to elon so he the way he he was driving change he said like okay yeah you take out all the all the all the um unwanted things like paperwork like you sign like bunch of paper so we are working hard i'm not saying we have done that but the way he said is like we need to do this okay. have whichever government official who wants additional papers to be signed ask them to call me and say why we need to do all of these right so it's so that's kind of the things that we all learn from him to say people just say go by status quo telling them oh this is traditional normal stuff we have to do it so the way elon thinks is why it seems to be cumbersome it seems to be complex it's not easy for customers it's not easy for us why should we do it so on that topic of um, and this is my last question for you today uh, on the topic of of status quo you know many of us many of our young tamil professionals in our community are doing well and they're you know in in good positions in in across different industries and they and some may be in a position you were in a few years ago with vmware that they're in a comfortable position and they're a little reluctant to take a risk on a, a new venture or joining a new company because of that risk what advice do you have for 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 young people or young professionals who are in that situation about risk what are your thoughts so <clears throat> put it simple um um high risk almost all of the times in my experience is high reward so the higher the risk you can take and higher the bigger the problem you can solve the bigger the challenge you're going to take the bigger the reward is going to be it's very very true and it's the thing is it's not taking foolish uh, risks but it, if you take really calculated risk which several people can do all of our in professionals can think they have to get out of the box and take the fear out and go and do what they think is good is right and what they really uh, dream about and many times they see all the signs and many many times i would say the signs will be always shown to you instinctively you will feel hey this is a great thing but some something will always pull you back you want to get over that break that barrier and say okay i'm going for it what could what could happen right worst especially when you're young what could happen for many many times like it's, it's a small story you'd probably share in the speech as well as more uh, some someone asked a successful businessman telling that okay Uh, what what is your biggest turning point in success and his answer was the biggest turning point was uh, the last thing my boss the previous boss said i said okay well, what did he really say he said you are fired so that's kind of um, so some people take that turning point um so that's kind of uh, um i would say just break the barrier go do what you love and and yeah take the risk i mean take the risk and solve a bigger problem Uh thank you Mr. J Vigen. Uh please join us. Please stay tuned for other interviews with many of our successful leaders uh at the Fetna convention today. Thank you dear viewers for joining us today as we revisited the Fetna convention. We hope you enjoyed our interviews and the program. Thank you very much. See you next week. Tamil Nadu Tamil Nadu Bimbam Ungal TV Yeah